Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Soul Focused Radio. This is your host, Martin Friedman, and I'm here with your your host, Cindy Edwards, and your host, Martina Tam. Hey, you all. Hello, hello. Hi. How are y'all doing? <laughs> doing well. First time all three of us have been together in a long time. I this know. is This is awesome. It's been a while. It is. I always think it'd be interesting for our listeners, our regular listeners, you know, just to, cause the last time I did it solo and I was just like, you know, they, they just, it's like a little surprise, you know, like who's going to be on this time. You know, I always think about that. I always think that that would be like a nice little surprise just to see who's on. So here's your surprise, all three of us. So <laughs> what's going on with you? What's going on with you all? Cindy, are you getting ready for a trip? I am. I'm not leaving until the day after Christmas, but we're going to go to Hawaii for a basketball tournament. So Lots of basketball the next upcoming weeks and months and years, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like it's never not a lot of basketball in your life. Yeah, I love it, though. I love it. KJ, last weekend, was balling. He, it's so fun to watch him play and just to see how much he's developed, you know, and he's only six and... I think he's incredible. So just, I can only imagine what he'll be like when he gets older and wow. just keeps working on his craft. So he's like a young Kelly. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. I, I think I saw the video you posted on, on Instagram. Yeah. Of him. Yeah. I, I forgot he's only six. Yeah. And, and he plays up with second graders. So they're like eight. So it's really impressive, wow. Martin. I'll have to send it to you so you can see it. Yes, send it to me. And uh, and he and he loves it. He loves basketball. He loves it. And you know, Kelly and I are really conscious of not forcing it on him. And so we kind of just you know let him tell us when he wants to go to the gym and work out. And mm. it's most times he's like, "Hey, right. can we go shoot? I want to. I want to go to the gym. I want to go to the Bellevue Club. I want to shoot." Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So hey, you all. I think you know we don't. It's just us, so we're 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 going to be us today, and and nobody else. So we are each other's guests today. So uh, we're going to do a year in review, and if you all are up for it, I would say let's get going. What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah, let's get started. At the Soul Focus Group. We're probably one of the first organizations in the social justice movement to find ourselves moving away from fighting against racism to creating human solidarity. What we found is that we could fight 24 hours, 48 hours, or all our lives, and after fighting all this time, we have nothing to show for it. Of course, because we haven't created anything for ourselves. At the Soul Focus Group, we are one of the few organizations who have moved from fighting against racism to creating an alternative to racism. And we invite you to join us. Let's stop fighting and start creating the outcome we really want to experience. All right, so this is us doing our year in review. And I just want to say, I want to acknowledge what you were saying about uh, about KJ and basketball and how much he likes to go to the Bellevue Club because I think I just got a little abrupt because I was so excited to get in this conversation. So I want to acknowledge again, you know, our previous conversation and that it may have been a little bit of an abrupt segue, but I'm just excited for us to talk. No, I totally get it. I'm super excited to catch up with you guys too. And just to review, you know, on on this whole journey, it's been, to me, I feel like I've grown so much. I still remember the very first time Martin, you and I recorded a podcast and how nervous I was. I was meditating. I was lighting incense. I was so <laughs> nervous. And yep. even after doing all that recording, like after that, I was still felt nervous. And now it's just like, I'm like, oh, I'm just ready. Like, you know, I just got done working out, got my prote- protein shake in, you know, quick shower. And then now I'm here. I'm like, just ready to go. You know, none of the meditation, no nerves. And so it's really incredible just to see how much growth has, just just to see my growth pretty much with this whole process and journey. 
That's beautiful. Martina, did you, did you know that Cindy and I did a, it's like the secret hidden <laughs> podcast that Cindy made me promise will never, ever be aired ever. No. <laughs> did you know that that existed? No. And I bet it's fantastic. No, I'm it curious. Was so awkward. Do you still feel that now, like now that you're more comfortable and have done more podcasts, do you still think it it shouldn't be released? Yes, it was really awkward. (laughs) I don't agree, but I get it. And actually, I think, you know, one of the great things, Martina, was, you know, getting your voice in right from the beginning, too, I think was really helpful. I didn't think it was that awkward, but I, I get how Cindy did feel that way. But that will that will never be aired. You know, that'll be in the secret vaults forever. <laughs> actually, I think I think um, I think I actually deleted it, Cindy, because I think you asked me to do that. So I think I deleted it. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so what what about you, Martina? Like, what's you know what's it been like for you? Has that have you also felt that shift in terms of nervousness and preparation and all of that? Definitely, and I think I'm feeling two things. One is I'm really excited to have the chance for us to talk and reflect about our time together doing the podcast because we really haven't had that time to talk about our, the episodes and what they've been like for us. Um, Mm -hmm. and for sure, I think for it went in waves. So just like you, Cindy, feeling super nervous, being on a podcast, all that prep work and just, I don't know, not finding my words, having a hard time being myself. And then as that got more comfortable, the next step was actually being able to listen to the podcast and hear, you know, us and, my own voice on a podcast was really uncomfortable. And now I just play the podcast while I'm at home, you know, cleaning or doing something like I'm listening to any podcast and I don't feel those nerves. And that's been a nice Mm. transformation being less in the ego about hearing myself on a podcast and just appreciating it and and re-listening and kind of hearing the wisdom that everyone has to share. So that's kind of been my transformation in my nervousness. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's great, you all. And um, you know, when I think about the ones that we've done together, I don't really think that came across, just so you all know. I don't think that ever came across. I mean, I think both of you were were honest, you know, about this being a really new thing for you, but I or not but I should say, and I felt there was a naturalness from the very beginning. Um, with each of you individually and also the three of us as a podcasting host team. And I, I'll say that there was an adjustment for me, obviously, because yeah. I was used to being solo, you know. Were you going to say something, uh, Martina? No, I was just saying, yeah, I'm curious to hear more about that adjustment for you. Oh, yeah, no problem, no problem. So for me, right, it was definitely an adjustment because, you know, even the concept, I think the the adjustment for me more was just the concept um, the unknown aspect of, you know, helping, especially at the beginning to facilitate all three of our voices getting out in a way that, that feels equitable and, and natural to our listeners after, you know, I've been just so set in my ways of, you know, just being, just being solo, you know, and being able to just, I think, I think that the concern that I had was I was worried about the flow. And I mean, honestly, like there's been a few of our podcasts I've listened back to and, you know, we talk over each other sometimes or talk at the same time together and it's not, it's not a big deal at all. If it sounds good and it sounds natural, those were the kind of concerns that I had going into it. I wouldn't say nervousness, but I would just, I was just wondering what that flow was going to feel like. And uh, it, for me, it didn't take long at all for us to get used to it. In fact, you know, lately we haven't been able to record very much with all three of us and I've I've missed it. You know, I've missed that. Yeah. It kind of became a part of my weekly routine doing these recordings together. For sure. Yeah. I hope we can get back to it actually. Yeah. What were we going to say, Cindy? No, I was just saying for sure. Like it definitely is a part of like our weekly routine. It has been a lot harder for me lately just because Kelly has been coaching and, you know, games on Thursdays. And so it's really hard to, to find time between all three of our schedules. But, you know, I really hope we can get back into the groove of things and, you know, keep them going every week together and with our guests. Yeah, me too. Me too. Like, and, and I, you know, the, there's, there's our schedules and there's also the time difference too, you know, with me being East Coast time and you all being West Coast time, you know, that three hours, I think, can throw a, a wrench into it sometimes too, you know. Definitely. And you've been doing a lot of traveling too. Absolutely. Yeah. This is like this, this stretch, this last six week stretch for me has been like what it used to be like before the pandemic, you know, Mm -hmm. three cross country trips in six weeks and 
two or three other trips between Florida and and uh, the North, as I say now. So now that I live in the <laughs> South, I talk about going to the North a lot. Um, <laughs> You know, and then, and I think both of you know that, you know, I've been dealing with health issues with my mom and, yeah. well, I know both of you know, and I think our, our listeners know too, because I do talk about it, but, you know, just, you know, just being present for her and everything she's going through with the medical establishment right now and, and transitions that she's making. So it's been, it's been a lot. I'm not going to lie to you all. And I'm, I'm almost 60. I don't know if you all know that or not, but I'm going to turn 60 in 2023. So wow. I am wow. not a spring chicken anymore. I know. Right. And so, so I, I love travel and also having a pretty hectic travel schedule and, and doing workshops is maybe not, you know, I think I need to probably scale back a little bit in the future, you know, not have quite the intensity that I've had. So, yeah. So all that's been going on for us. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're aging gracefully, Martin, <laughs> but just hearing about like your traveling schedule, it made me think about our one episode where we were talking mm. about, I think it was emotional sobriety and you had mentioned how much traveling you were doing. And there was almost like a thrill behind all the traveling. Do you still feel that way now? You know, like that feeling you get just being on the go or now because you are getting older, it's really starting to wear down on you. Yeah. You know, for some reason, I, you know, I didn't get sick at all through the entire pandemic. And then for some reason, when I went out to the Seattle area in um, November, I remember it was November 8th, I, I got either like a cold or allergy, a sinus infection or something. And like every four or five days now, I, it, you know, it goes away and then it comes back because I got to figure it out with my doctor. So I've been, I've had these like, you know, sneezing, coughing, runny nose outbreaks on several of my plane trips and it really makes it miserable. I'm not going to lie, you know, and then also, you know, having to take DayQuil and NyQuil just to kind of get through it. So this has been really extra grueling and I love being in person. Yeah. I really miss being in person. I know some people and I and I love I love the flexible aspect of virtual and being able to, you know, have my commute be from the, you know, the living room to the to my office, you know, where I live. I love I love that um aspects of that. And I would say nothing matches for me uh doing a workshop in person and having that exchange of in-person energy. Even even though I'm still like wearing masks a lot, it's still awesome, really. I bet. I, I know I still really want to be able to participate and attend one of our in-person workshops. Yeah, most definitely. It's a, it's a different it's a different experience really. So have you ever heard of a term called groundwater? Groundwater is another word we use at the Soul Focus Group that means subconscious programming. From the ages of zero to seven, we are subconsciously programmed. So much information and choices and decisions are downloaded into our subconscious mind. And we begin to start living that life. And even though that life we're living is not the life we chose for ourselves. And it's not until we understand the impact of the groundwater, what the groundwater really is, that we begin to wake up to our own lives and begin to choose what we want for ourselves. At the Soul Focus Group, we bring you to that consciousness so that you can begin to choose the life you want to live for yourself. So you mentioned that you mentioned that that reminded you of an episode. I'd really love to hear from both of you. Like what what were the highlights of this year for you all in terms of episodes that we recorded? I mean, I can go first. You know, my first one, you know, the the two that really stuck out to me because it just was such divine timing, I would say, was our episode on self-forgiveness. And then the following week, it was self-accountability because I had just, you know, in my life, I had this conflict that had happened with me. And I usually don't really deal with a lot of conflict. I live a pretty low-key, drama-free life. But in that moment, it was, you know, a little emotionally, I guess, like distressful for me because I had, you know, hurt somebody that I loved. And I just remember not, had we not had that conversation on self-forgiveness and yeah, self-forgiveness, it would have been really hard for me to get over that situation that happened, right? Like I probably would have stressed out about it for 
weeks, maybe even like months, just because, you know, like we hate feeling like we let somebody down and we hate hurting somebody, especially somebody that we love. And just, you know, in that time of my life, like because we had talked about it and I had learned how to forgive myself and learned how the importance of it, like that really was really helpful for me. And just now with how I handle situations, you know, it's just giving myself grace, you know, in moments if I have a a difficult time with my children, like, and I reflect about it, I always forgive myself and tell myself, like, I'm just doing the best that I can, you know, and it really helps with like the mom guilt that, that I feel like me and a lot of my other fellow mommies have, you know, on a day to day basis, you know, Martina, I don't know if you can relate or if you're having any mom guilt, because, you know, Makeba is still so little, but, you know, just me with dealing with three children who are now very vocal and learning how to honor, you know, their emotions and their ways of thinking, you know, and, and my way of thinking. So sometimes it can clash. And so, you know, I just, there's a lot of reflection that goes on. And so I don't really know, Martina, if you can relate right now in this stage. Yeah, I know, Cindy, it's when I reflect back on the year, I think a lot actually about the wisdom I've learned in parenting by listening to the podcast and being a part of the podcast. And like that mom guilt is so real. I feel it every moment that I'm not with her. So there's a huge aspect of self-forgiveness. And as I'm thinking back on the episodes, I think a lot about the self-forgiveness is a big one. And I think for me, learning about self-forgiveness as a parent, because, you know, I was even a newer parent back when we recorded on that one. Um, and I've really appreciated hearing your your segments about parenting and giving me just so much to reflect on. And also talking about emotional vulnerability with parenting. That's another one that really sticks out in my memory. Kind of your reflections on, I think you get, you told the story about changing. I forget whose diaper you were changing. Come Do you on. remember the story? Yeah. yeah. Come on, he's diaper. And just being kind of, you know, just overwhelmed and breaking down into tears and Kamani just like recognizing that and being there with you and just me, you know, showing that it's important to be emotionally vulnerable. And even at such a young age, even with a, an infant or now with a toddler. Um, so that's a piece that I actually think about often. I don't know if I told you that on a regular basis about how do I continue to be emotionally vulnerable with Makeba and really live that both for my own sake and then also as modeling for her. So I think when I reflect on my parenting journey, uh, this podcast has played a big role in that. And I'm really grateful to you and to our guests and to Martin for your wisdom in that. Gosh, there's so many episodes that really stick out for me. Another one kind of on the professional level was self-forgiveness when we had Dustin on the podcast and we talked about diabetes Um, and what does it look like in terms of self-forgiveness with having a chronic disease that can be related to lifestyle and it just really changed my way of thinking in terms of, he talked about like being a recovering diabetic, that phrase really stuck out to me and being in recovery from diabetes and from kind of the addictions and the habits that can be associated with having a diagnosis of diabetes. Whereas we often think about substance use disorder in that realm. But that really changed my framework of thinking about other chronic conditions. Gosh, I could just go on and on. I was really impacted by our conversations and our series on trauma. But yeah, there was, I could keep going on. I'm curious, Martin, what have been some, some episodes that really have stayed with you? Yeah, I really enjoyed listening to what you all were saying that your favorites were. I, I, I liked so much of what we did. Really, Honestly, I liked all of what we did. There was nothing I didn't I didn't like. What I think the one of the ones that stood out most for me was when the three of us interviewed Devin on self forgiveness, and he was you know talking about his experiences being incarcerated and stuff. That was really powerful. This most recent one that we just released this week, where um, I interviewed uh, Jackie Roby, that one was really powerful for me on a lot of levels. And you know, we've had several conversations around you know, uh, sexual trauma, you know, sexual abuse as, as small children and stuff. And, but for some reason, just the way that, that Jackie shared, yeah, really, really impacted me. And there were some that I wasn't a part of that I just helped record like conversation, you know, Martina that you had with, you know, the, um, pediatrician who's 
name I'm forgetting right now. And Cindy Carnegie, can Dr. you remind Nilo, me? Of, Dr. Nilo. Dr. Nilo. Dr. Nilo and Cindy Carnegie. Um, yeah, the conversation that you had with Dr. Nilo and and Doc, and Cindy Carnegie, I thought that was that was really cool for me just to just to listen, you know. Yeah, it was just so much. I just, you know, I, I just, I want to say to both of you that I just really, really appreciated the perspective and the energy that you all brought. And I heard a lot of feedback from people that the voices that you all brought, you know, and the, you know, the, the spirit of openness, vulnerability, and also just learning, I think really shifted the whole vibe and the whole energy of our podcast this year. So I really want to point that out in general. And I want to thank you both for, you know, for what you brought. Likewise, I echo your sentiment. You know, oh, I've learned so much from our episodes and have gained, you know, a tremendous amount of wisdom. And I just, I really look forward to continuing having these conversations because I feel like it, it's very mentally stimulating, you know, especially on a day to day where I'm constantly dealing with children. And, you know, it's just different, it's a different level of conversation. And so I truly appreciate it. Awesome. Me too. I just, I'm so grateful. I want to thank you for inviting us to be a part of the podcast. And I kind of feel like it's my weekly therapy session. You know, not that I'm like talking, doing talk therapy, yeah, but yeah. I've always given so much to reflect on. So it's almost like, I guess, a weekly coaching session. Yeah. Um, mm. so it's, I've grown immensely you know, on a personal level. And I hope people listen and I hope people gain a lot from our conversations. But even if they don't, it's something that I feel like I'm being able to grow from so much and see those effects in my family and in myself that I'm just, I'm so grateful and glad that we get to continue doing this. I think that's what's made it special to have you on, on here is, is that vibe. So yeah, I just, I really want to thank you both, you know, for, for coming on today and, and doing this year in review. And um, I know it's a little short, but I just, just wanted to just leave folks, you know, with, with a, a, an energy of what we were feeling. So I want to um, just thank you both for, you know, what you did this year and, and, you know, the next, the next podcast we're going to do is we're going to start to talk a little bit about what we'd like to do next year. So I just want to thank you both um, so much for this year. Of course. And thank you so much to our listeners, you know, for tuning in. And we hope that this episode will help you reflect on, you know, the previous episodes that you've listened to. And, you know, we'd love to hear your thoughts on which one really stood out to you. And Martin later on will share all of those um, platforms. Absolutely. Agreed. Thank you both so much. And like you said, Cindy, thanks to our listeners too. I'm excited to hopefully get some, some questions and comments too. It'd be great to, to get that, that back from our listeners. come to the soul focus group you come to an acknowledgement that there has been injuries done to us from all these different forms of oppression injuries that have impacted our subconscious mind our heart our spirit our very soul so at the soul focus group we recognize that and we focus on healing healing the return or the recovery of our connections to our healthy self our beautiful thinking mind we want you to come join us in a movement of healing all around the world to restore us back to our rightful state. At the Soul Focus Group, we heal. Well, that is our year in review. I really hoped you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed this year. I hope you enjoyed the shift that we made and our reflection on it. Uh, next week, we'll come back with some ideas for what we'll be doing next year from a few different voices. So we want to thank you as always for being part of our Soul Focused Radio family. Uh, make sure you're going to soulfocusgroup.com and check out everything that we're doing. Listen to our podcast on every podcast platform uh, like iTunes and Android and Spotify, YouTube, you know, please subscribe to us, like us, and, you know, just continue to be a part of our family. So thank you for everything. We continue to grow and grow and we love and care about you. And we ask that as always, you stay safe, stay well. 
And most of all, stay soul-focused.